I'm going to show you how to stitch out block 23, which is almost the same as block 21. The orientation and the mirror is different. There's also differences in the quilting in the three different areas. So it's important that you stitch four of each of these blocks for our quilt. And let's see what we need to make it. Okay, so to make block 23, here's my block 23. There's the tops up here. Um, we are going to need all these fabrics. See, these are the threads that we're going to need and your instructions will tell you exactly what thread to use for each of it. Don't forget that if you have chosen to add your backing fabric uh, while it's in the hoop that you will also need matching bobbins for several of these. And you will also need your water soluble thread and your embroidery bobbin thread and you will need a strip of fabric six which is for me is the dark green you will need either a piece of fabric one or fabric two depending on if you're doing block 23 or 28 you will also need a strip of fabric seven and a strip of fabric four. And again, just refer to your instructions for the size of the fabric. This is optional if you are using your um, a piece of wool to put in your quilt, then you will press the edges a quarter of an inch in to prepare it to prevent the wool from getting caught in your presser foot. So um, again, refer to your instructions on what size to cut that. So once you have your battleizer in the hoop, you're going to go to step one, which is stitching out with water soluble thread. It's kind of hard for you to see on here, I'm sure. This is a placement stitch for where to place the wool. So I've already done step one, and we're going to move on to step two. So for step two, I have my, my piece of wool, and I have it pressed along the edges to prevent the presser foot from getting caught. This is an optional step, so if you're not using wool in your quilt, you will just fast forward and skip over to step three. I have water-soluble thread in my needle only, and the machine is stitching out a zigzag stitch to keep this attached to the battleizer. For step three, I still have water-soluble thread in the needle, and it's going to stitch a pattern onto the wool or onto the battleizer if you're not using the wool. And all you have to do is, first of all, you should probably raise your presser foot to the highest position if your machine's capable of doing that. And as it's stitching, you're just gonna push the wool down to help keep the foot from getting caught. you're going to take your strip of fabric seven you're going to lay it right side up you still have water soluble thread in the needle and you're going to place it right over this section and the instructions will show you where that goes and of course we've got step-by-step -step slideshows you can um, take a look at but i'm placing it so that the raw edge extends a quarter of an inch past this section here and I'm just going to let the machine sew a tack down stitch. And we just have to hold the fabric in place so it continues to lay flat. On your puckers at the end. And you're going to trim leaving about a half an inch on the outside edges of the block. On the inside of the block you're going to trim to a quarter of an inch seam allowance little piece of fabric seven that you pull off, hang on to that because that's going to go in a little teeny tiny corner as one of the last piecing steps. For step five, you're going to need either your fabric one for block 23 or your fabric two for block 28. And you're just going to take it and you're going to lay it right sides down, raw edges even. You're going to put just a neutral thread in the machine, and the machine will sew a seam. On step six, 
you're going to go back to the water soluble thread and the reason for that is because anything that is stitched on the outside edge of your block you want it to be water soluble soluble so that when you sew the blocks together if there's any of that basting stitch sticking out it would definitely just be washed away and you won't have to use a seam ripper to get rid of it um, you're going to take your fabric and you're going to flip it right side up smooth it out and finger press it and then sew that tack down stitch with the water soluble thread for step seven you're going to take your strip of fabric four and you're going to lay it right side down raw edges even on the opposite side of fabric seven and you're going to place neutral sewing thread in the needle only and we're going to sew a seam you're going to flip your fabric right side up and you are going to smooth it out and you're going to finger press the seam and you're going to do a tack down stitch using the same neutral thread. Just keep the fabric smoothed out so there's no puckers at the end. Now we're going to trim this fabric so anything on the outside edge of the block you're going to leave approximately a half an inch there and the areas that are on the inside of the block you're going to trim those to a quarter inch seam. I love my hoop scissors. This has the right angle to get down inside of the hoop. Now for step nine, you're going to take your strip of fabric seven once again, and you are going to lay it right sides down, raw edges even with that last piece of fabric. And we're going to continue with the neutral thread and sew a seam. For step 10, we're going to leave the same thread in the needle, and you'll Flip fabric seven right side up and you'll smooth it out and finger press that seam and sew the tack down stitch and just hold the fabric in place so there's no pucker. Now it's time to trim our fabric seven and it's the same way. Fabric that's on the outside of your block, which would be at the top here. Um, I just have a little bit more it's more than a half an inch but I'm gonna leave it there but if you have a, a long strip then you can trim it leaving at least a half an inch at, on the outside on the inside of the block I'm gonna use my hoop scissors to trim to a scant quarter inch seam allowance for step 11 you'll need your strip of fabric six and you're gonna lay it right side down and you're going to place the raw edges even with your fabric seven. And with the same thread, you're going to sew a seam. For step 12, you're going to place water soluble thread in the needle only. And that's because some of the tack down stitches will take place on the outside edges of the block. And as I mentioned before, once you sew your block together, if any of those stitches are peeking out, then you can just easily get them wet to dissolve them. Um, so I have flipped my fabric right side up and smoothed it out. And just give a little finger press. And we're gonna sew a tack down stitch. Now it's time to trim our fabric six and what we're going to do is again the same rule applies leave at least a half an inch or so um, on the outside of the block this is, again is a little more generous I'm going to leave it there I'm going to trim because I have the rest of my strip at the bottom so let me just cut this and leave approximately a half an inch on the outside of the block um, I'm also going to leave what is on the side because It'll be trimmed off later and it's not in my way right now. 
in this corner for block 23, you're gonna have to piece a little tiny piece of fabric seven. So I'm going to trim this, the seam allowance, so it is about an eighth of an inch. My fabric is darker and my fabric seven is lighter and I don't want that to peek through. And it is a little teeny tiny area. On step 13, that little scrap of fabric seven that we cut off on our first after our first tack down, we're gonna use that now to piece this little tiny corner right here. And I have put just neutral thread in my needle only, and I'm placing my fabric seven right side down, raw edges even, and we can machine will sew a seam. Step 14, it's gonna do the tack down stitch for that corner, so I switched to water soluble thread again because it is on the outside edge of the block. And I'm going to finger press the seam after I flip the fabric over and sew the tack down stitch. Step 15, you're going to put a thread in the needle only that matches our fabric three. And we're going to sew a decorative stitch on both sides of the green section. Step 16, I have threaded the needle that matches my fabric six and the machine will sew a satin stitch. And I know there's no raw edge to cover here. However, there are some blocks where this um, piece is continued throughout the quilt where the way that we had to piece it, it required a raw edge. This particular one is a seam, but we're still using that satin stitch so that it continues and is consistent throughout the entire quilt once it's finished. For step 17, this is the step that you would add your backing fabric if you're adding the backing fabric while it's in the hoop. And to do that, you would just take your hoop off the machine and you would leave, leave your block inside the hoop and then you would add your piece of backing fabric to the back. I'm not gonna do that. I've decided to just add the backing in sections all at once, but you would just take your piece of backing fabric and center it and then peek underneath. Make sure you have it perfectly centered over the edges of your block. And this is nice because it just kind of attaches to the back of your, your hoop. But I'm not going to do that. If you choose to do that, I'll give you a little instructions there too. So I'm just putting mine on just like that with the battleizer showing. Put, move the camera a little bit and put my my hoop back on the machine. So now whether you're adding the backing or not adding the backing, in this particular block you will stitch out this basting stitch. Um, the basting stitch, if you have the back on, is going to help keep the back on. The other thing that it's going to do if you don't have the back on is there's some areas where there is not a basting stitch on the outside. So this will add that basting stitch and that gives you the edge to trim against once you have your block out of the hoop. So with water soluble thread, I'm just going to go ahead and sew that out. For step 18, you're going to put thread in the needle. That's your choice of thread color. And you can look at your instructions and see the design that's going to be stitching out on the entire quilt. If you have your backing fabric on, and this is only if you have your backing fabric on, you will need to match your bobbin thread with what's in your needle. You will also need to turn off your automatic thread cutter. And you'll also, it's also helpful to bring your bobbin thread to the top of your block. So I'm gonna pull that up. The reason you would do these three things is so that your backing has a much neater looking back and there doesn't end up being any bird's nest or ugliness on the back. And then you can just hold these threads and begin stitching. Let it take a few stitches. And then go ahead and cut those threads, those thread tails. Now, if you're like me and I skip the backing and I will add it in sections later on as I'm assembling the quilt, you can just go ahead and hit the start button. You don't have to worry about any of that because your back will be covered. The 
and these are the steps that will apply until the quilt block is completely finished. Step 19, you'll need thread in the needle and in the bobbin if you have the backing on, but just regular embroidery bobbin thread if you don't, but thread that matches your fabric seven and then the machine will sew the quilting. Step 20, I put thread that matches my fabric two in the needle. And if you have the backing on, put it also in your bobbin. And don't forget to do, if your backing's on, to do a needle down, needle up, and bring your bobbin thread to the top. I don't have the backing on, I'm gonna do it later. So again, I'm just gonna hit the start button and let it go. Step 21, you're going to use thread that matches fabric 5, and it's going to sew some quilting in this area. For step 22, you're going to put thread in the needle that matches fabric 3, and also match your thread in the bobbin if you have your backing on, and then do all the steps that we've instructed before. I don't have my backing on, so I get to just hit the start button. Gonna sew some really cool quilting. So here is my completed block 23. And I think I got the wrong side of it. I have oh I marked it. Make sure you mark your block so that you know what, what where it goes in your big puzzle piece when you're finished. So when you are finished with your block 23 and 28, all four sides will be trimmed using the trimmer by George 3.0. And by using the metal side of it, you're going to trim all four sides to reduce the bulk that is in the seams. And that is a wonderful thing when you're sewing these completed blocks together. So I hope you found this video helpful, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.